I'm going to show you 12 different attractions that are going to make your Jurassic World Evolution 2 parks way more interesting and more exciting. It's not mods, all you need is a little bit of imagination and inspiration and then you can do a lot, a lot more than just another viewing gallery or another tour. The first attraction you can add to your aviaries and lagoons and it is the VR Drone Adventure. Basically, you turn a hatchery into an attraction. Visually, a very simple way to do this is to add a queue and flags leading up to the entrance of the hatchery. What you pretend here is that guests can put on a VR headset and take control of a drone and use that to explore the aviary or the lagoon to make it feel like they can fly with the flying reptiles or swim with the marine reptiles, but safely. If you have the Dominion Biosyn expansion, you can also use the Hyperloop system as an awesome attraction, an underground roller coaster. Make some crazy loops with the Hyperloop and then instead of taking it to another building, just loop it back to the start. Obviously it doesn't go up or down, but you can pretend it does. Easier to pretend is that the Hyperloop capsule spins around itself to create a corkscrew effect. Again, just adding a queue and decorations really helps sell this as an attraction in your park. This one I'm not even going to count towards one of the 12, but you can also make a pretend roller coaster with the monorail. By playing with the elevation under the tracks, you can make the train go up and down for that roller coaster effect, at least when you look at it from a distance. What's also really fun to do with the monorail is just turn it into a big tour. So instead of using it as transport in your park, going from point A to point B and maybe looping back, you just loop it back from a single station, like only one station, and you'll go back to that first station to really help it be a tour. Something I've shown very recently is how to build a racetrack. Dinosaur racing would be really cool as one of the main attractions of your parks. I've attached holding pens with Carnos, but you can attach holding pens or even full exhibits with several different species to your version of the racetrack. Like any of the Ornithomimids, Hadrosaurus or Raptor species would work really well. On the interior of the racetrack, you can place a lot of amenities to fulfill your guests' needs, or you can turn it into an exhibit if you want to use the space that way. I love the look of this as a big centerpiece in a park, and you can really imagine an entire park around it. With the rings of monorail track around it, it just looks very different from everything else in your park, but it's this big focal point, and it also balances out like the other big things in your park, like lagoons and aviaries. A much smaller attraction or activity that you can add anywhere in your park, like maybe you're done building and you have an awkward little space lift that you don't know what to do with. That's something that I see a lot happening in comments and people are like, what do I do with this little space I have left? Well, turn it into a campsite. The white tents are absolutely key for the look of this, so if you are playing with the game on a PS4 or Xbox One, where you can't have all buildings in one map, make sure you select the right building set if you intend to create a campsite. As long as you have those white tents, it's super easy to create. Lay down some sand with the terrain textures to make the campsite, use a small circle of rocks as the fire pits, and then put the white tents around it. Another small attraction slash activity that you can work into those small spaces that you may have left in your park is the faux fossil excavation. Basically a fake fossil dig site where fake fossils are buried that the guests have to dig up and apply plaster to and really just give them the experience of being a paleontologist working out in the field. I like placing the Spinosaurus skeleton as part of this attraction because you can pretend that at the start of the activity, certain bones of that skeleton are missing and the guests have to one, find those bones and then put them in the right spot on the skeleton. So it's also a learning experience about dinosaur anatomy. I don't know about you, but I want to do this. That sounds like my kind of entertainment. If you're enjoying these tips for new and exciting attractions, please give the video a like and subscribe for more videos so you can make the best possible parks. Moving on, number six, Hadrosaur Hotel. Now that's just a nice alliteration. I've also used this trick with sauropods and I think really any herbivore is realistically suitable and it's just gonna look really good. What you do is partly place a Jurassic Park hotel inside a dinosaur habitat so guests have a view into the habitat from the hotel balcony. You can either go with this being a hotel, like, you know, what it actually is and functions as in the game, and this unique experience is just a 
perk of staying in that specific hotel. Or you can stretch your imagination a little bit and instead of a hotel, it can be its own attraction. The building is just a restaurant or a place where trainers give a presentation and then guests go out onto the balcony and have that giraffe experience that you can get in many zoos where the giraffe are lured closer with food and you can hand feed them. It's just a perfect interactive viewing attraction for your parks. For the next one, I've already made a full dedicated video, but really all of these attractions I've already shared in past videos on the channel, but I wanted to combine all the ideas in one video. So if you're new to the channel or you just happen to miss any of these as part of past park builds, you can still get all of the tips in one video, like one easy place and use that as inspiration and a starting point for your park build. But this one, number seven is a petting zoo. I love using the invisible fencing for this, closely lining the path with the invisible fence. And you can pretend that while the dinosaurs can't walk over the fence, so they can't escape, the guests can step over the fence, so they can walk up to the dinosaurs and hand feed them and pet them, or maybe even have kids ride the dinosaurs. You know, if kids were allowed in our dinosaur parks. Species that I think are really suitable for that idea are Minmi and the Crichtonsaurus. As an alternative to the invisible fences, you can also use the Malta wall pieces. Obviously, this would also completely stop the guests from walking into the enclosure, but you can pretend that they can reach over the wall and pet the dinosaurs that way, or you can even leave a gap between the wall pieces and add one of those concrete barriers and pretend that the barrier can lower into the ground to let people into the enclosure. And then it goes back up again, like it, it closes behind them to keep the dinosaurs contained. To really sell the idea, make some paths in the enclosure, either with actual path or with dirt or sand terrain texture. Guests won't use it, but it'll add to the realistic look. Next attraction is a paleo botany center. For this one, you use an aviary, put plenty of paleo foliage in the aviary and line a little path or area with rocks or other decorations. Because the idea here is that guests can come into the aviary, which is of course not actually an aviary, but a big greenhouse. And either a hatchery or a viewing gallery can serve as the entry point. Now, if you can bear to use the space for just plants for the Ellie Sattlers among us, you can. And I think it would really help sell the idea. But if you can't bear to skip out on animals, you can either add compies or top jaras as a type of biological pest control. If you can get yourself to believe that these species wouldn't attack the guests that would come into the greenhouse for like an educational experience about paleobotany. I really like this one and one of my main park building tips is to not be afraid to waste space and to not just use every inch of a map for creatures. So this fits in really well with that philosophy. Number nine doesn't take up a lot of space though and it is a helicopter tour. You apply the Q technique to any of the buildings with a helicopter and you can imagine that it is the starting point of a helicopter tour. My most important tip for this one is that you use a building that you haven't used before. So it has a unique look and won't be visually confused with whatever you are using as your entry point or functioning ranger station. My personal favorite building to use as a helicopter tour is the JP Arrival Helipad. Of the options we have, this building just looks the most like an attraction and the helicopter will actually periodically take off and return automatically. Instead of flying away, you can pretend it's taking off to do a tour. If you are using a ranger station, you can pretend that the jeeps are for VIP ground tours. I use that word a lot in this video, pretend. That might be a hard pill for some to swallow. Yes, it would be way more awesome if we had any of these actually in the game. But we don't, that's the reality of it. Instead of letting that dampen my enjoyment, I take it as a challenge to my own creativity and I just see what I can come up with. Honestly, a little bit of imagination is the best DLC you can get and it's free too and it applies on PC and console equally. Speaking of things that are free, by the way, and that you should definitely get into, subscribing to the channel. It is completely free, and I'm just sharing these ideas so you can make awesome parks. A few months ago, we got an update that introduced the wrangling mechanic, and pretty much right away, I came up with an attraction for that, a parade. It's just two enclosures connected to each other by a narrow strip that has a lot of viewing galleries on either side. 
I covered it with path and I used a lot of decorations. Now you can go two ways here. You can pretend, and there's that word again, that at set show times during the day, a ranger team wrangles whatever dinosaur is part of this attraction from one enclosure to the next, and guests can gather in the galleries at that time to watch the parade. Or if you have the food and water requirement turned on, you can put food in one enclosure and water in the other, forcing the animals to naturally migrate in between and your guests can view that. Obviously you need to be mindful of the distance between the two enclosures then. Whatever approach you take, I think it's a lot of fun to design a parade and I highly recommend you try it out. Especially the lagoons feel a little limited in Jurassic World Evolution 2 due to the lack of attractions you can add. I started this video with the VR drone adventure, but I have another attraction for the lagoons specifically. For this attraction, you want to dig down around the lagoon to expose the concrete base. You can overlap buildings and decorations ever so slightly with this concrete, so you can use that to create the entrance to an underwater tunnel, like what you see in most aquariums. You can place a building right up to and overlap it with the concrete base and use that as your entry point, or in a park that already uses the Malta aesthetic a lot, the Malta tower decorations, which have a door opening in them. You can add one entry point or an entry point and a separate exit, which can be on the same side. So you'd envision that the tunnel runs along the edge of the lagoon, or you can place the entry and the exit across from one another and the tunnel would then cut through the lagoon. You can add a lot of decorations to the lagoon floor where the tunnel would be. So it kinda, if you squint, looks like there is actually something there. Last attraction idea is just a whole Jurassic Park themed area within your park. This is for the PC, PS5 and Xbox XS players who have the all buildings option. If you're playing on an older console, you do not have this option. You have to choose a building set before you load in. However, if you have the all buildings option, you can do like this cool combination where you build an awesome park using the Jurassic World buildings and then within that park a separate area which is just completely Jurassic Park themed with matching amenities and decorations. Having only one or two entrance points for this separate section really helps sell it as its own themed area within your grander park. These were my 12 attractions that you can add to your game. If you like these, please give the video a like and subscribe for more park building tips. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game. Mm -hmm.